my dear friends in jesus christ today i am going to speak to you about father francis xavier crot mhm a mill hill missionary the founder of missionary sisters of saint francis xavier now called sisters of our lady of fatima francis crot was born in zoele holland on 7th december 1854 as the youngest of eight children to henry crot and john shroas the three youngest boys became priests bartholomew joined the society of jesus anthony and francis became the mill hill missionaries they had a very pious family to support them to inspire them to guide them and strengthen them by their prayers and good example Francis Xavier's life was filled with zeal for evangelization and for the fulfillment of his cherished dream he joined the Mill Hill Society in London he became the priest of the Lord on 9th June 1878 and reached madras on 8th august 1878 he was just 24 years of age father francis crot began his missionary career at st mary's cathedral armenian street madras as an assistant to the cathedral administration and especially dedicated to the study of tamil language He worked successively in Poonamalli and Bellary as military chaplain and as a parish priest to the local Christians who were mainly Tamil speaking. Later he was transferred to Ravi Padu in the heart of Telugu region working with his brother Anthony Crot. Already an adept at Tamil he now became equally adept at Telugu. Father Francis Crot was a man with a deep spirituality, prophetic insight, administrative capacity, an inspiring character, a man of zeal for soul, austere in life, a man of foresight, and above all, a committed missionary and a visionary. He was one with the people of India between 1878 and 1900. While he was spiritual guide for the British troops in Bellary he had a chance of working with the local Christians for a crude was moved with compassion when he saw the abject poverty immorality exploitation of the poor and the misery of the common people motivated by the preferential love of Christ for the marginalized of the society he seriously began contemplating ways and means to restore dignity to these helpless exploited victims of society he was convinced that the women who were considered weak could achieve great things in the mission field and a woman often succeeds where a man's industry and logic fail he felt that the foreign sisters were few occupied in schools and institutions and they are not capable of entering into the lives language and culture of indian women in parishes and villages empowered with these ideas he recognized that the best way to action was to found a community of dedicated indian women who will be willing to risk anything for this new challenge He was imbued with the spirit and zeal of St. Francis Xavier, ready to go out and evangelize the large masses in many parts of India. The undertaking was difficult and there were many obstacles to overcome, but obstacles only served to make him more determined to succeed. Having proposed his plan to Bishop Colgan, the Archbishop of Madras, He decided to found a congregation of Indian sisters. He selected a few girls and got them trained to live this special vocation. 
on 8th january 1893 his dream came true a dream of founding a congregation in india and he named the congregation the missionary sisters of saint francis xavier though a costly society was unheard in his days father francis crude was a pioneer in attracting vocation from the local harijan community in terms of prevailing hindu society they were the oppressed class dalits because of his age old prejudice this was an act of faith and courage mahatma gandhi was hardly 25 years of age had not began to arouse the conscience of the hindu masses against untouchability but already for the francis crot formed his first community expressing his faith that everyone is equal that the grace of god would be welcomed by the poor and work miracles through them because they were the humble and poor the anaving of yahweh his community will remain as a prophetic sign to the millions of poor and oppressed people who would seek their place in the church in the coming century unfortunately he had only rare glimpses of the infant congregation that he founded as his fields of activities were in distant mission stations and holding responsible post in his society he steered the milhel missionaries in india as their provincial and worked as a great missionary in bellary and in the telugu districts he was also rector and professor of the diocesan seminary at nellore and he accompanied archbishop colgan during his ad limina visit to rome and there he was raised to the dignity of privy chamberlain to his holiness the pope and doctor of divinity after his return he was the editor of catholic watchman now the new leader he was also appointed chaplain of fort st george at madras from the beginning father francis crow's health was weak and it deteriorated as the time went by from july 1899 he was a victim of typhoid malaria on medical advice he was forced to leave his beloved country india as it was hoped that the mild climate of europe will save his precious life accompanied by his brother anthony crot yamacham he left india when he was already at the verge of death to mill hill london he never reached london but he died at years in the south of france in a nursing home run by the franciscan sisters of saint mary of the angels the untimely death of father francis xavier crot on 5th january 1900 was a real blow to the young congregation the uphill journey was not at all a smooth one it has been a pascal mystery and opportunities were rare and remote for resuming contact either with the mill hill society or acquiring knowledge about the dynamic personality of father francis xavier crot in spite of the adverse circumstances the tiny seed planted in the soil of bellary grew into a mighty tree as foretold in the obituary of our founder on 16 july 1951 saw the wind of changes flowing through the congregation at the invitation of bishop andrew de sousa pune and with the permission of bishop john hogan of bellary the general aid and novitiate was shifted to pune and changed the name of the congregation from missionary sisters of saint francis xavier to sisters of our lady of fatima this great and saintly priest lay buried there unknown to the world for 88 years until he was brought home to pune on the 8th june 1988 on 29th june 1988 
Bishop Valerian de Sousa Opuni celebrated a Thanksgiving Mass after which Father Francis Croce's mortal remains were interred in a niche at the back of the chapel of Fatima Convent, Fatima Nagar, Pune, which houses the general aid and the novitiate of the congregation. Eighty-eight long years went by without any news about him, but today we are aware of the powerful impact left by him on account of the research done by Father Jim Bowes Yamacham on his life and activities. With unique devotion and firm determination, Father Jim Bowes made it a part of his mission to unearth, thus enrich our knowledge. Many surprises were in store. The discovery of 150 original letters written by Father Francis Crott and Father Anthony Crott between 1873 to 1900 from the archives of St. Joseph College, Mill Hill, London. He also visited Rome, Holland, Madras, Nellur, Bellari and Pune. In February 2013, we decided to take up the cause of canonization of Father Francis Crott. He is raised to the servant of God on 25th July 2017. We are grateful to Bishop Henry de Sousa for his tireless efforts for this cause and he still continues his efforts to raise him to the honors of the altar. Father Francis Crott was a fine specimen of manhood. When in good health, his energy was inexhaustible. As a missionary, he could be held as an example to everyone of his fellow priests. He was a scholar and a linguistic, speaking seven languages fluently. As a theologian, he was perfectly reliable and his decision could always be accepted with great confidence. He was a true type, the Catholic priesthood. full of sympathy for every man and woman or child whom he met in the discharge of his sacred duty. As we celebrate his death anniversary on 5th January, let us thank God for the manifold blessings we have received in the past through his intercession. May we have the joy of seeing raised him to the altar of God. Amen. Amen.